can cause respiratory failure as well. It is affecting the kidneys, it can cause renal failure. And because of this uh, infection is already there because of the virus, it can also come home to the secondary infections also. Secondary bacterial infections can also come. Okay, So this is very, very important aspect of the uh, infections. Secondly, this is one of the important aspect of immune response you should understand is if the immune system main function is to kill or contain the organism. Okay, I'll give you an example of containing the organism. You heard about tuberculosis. Okay, you can see tubercular ulcers or tubercloma on the upper surface of the upper lobe of the lungs, usually. Okay, there's some small bones, foci or tubercloma is there. We're surrounded by lymphocytes, monocytes, macrophages, which contain the tubercle bacilli. It doesn't allow it to go out of the lungs. Okay. So if it's not able to kill the TB bacilli, it's not able to kill the TB bacilli because it's got a very strong lipid layer on the cell membrane, which is very difficult to be penetrated or to be killed upon. So you require anti-tubercular anti -tubercular drugs to penetrate the cell membrane and make it very weakened so that the immune system can attack it and kill it. Okay. So you can fall. So this, if it is not able to kill the organism, the immune system tries to contain it. Okay. The same, similarly, patients with immunocompromisation, like people with HIV AIDS. Same TB becomes similar to tuberculosis. It's throughout the lungs. It's not in one part of the lungs. It's throughout the lungs because the immune system is not able to act. So if the immune system is very, very low, the infection can just spread just like it. Like, for example, you see kids with the protein energy malnutrition, PEM. Okay? So they are more, they are, most of them die because of infectious diseases. Okay? Because the immunity is very, very low. The, it just spreads very, very fast. Okay? Or the immunity should also be quite good enough to contain it. But if immunity is more also, it's also a problem. The exaggerated high uh, high exaggerated response of the immune system can cause cytokine storm okay, in SARS and COV2, and this can even ca cause death of the patient as well. So it has to be something which is balanced. We call them as immune homeostasis. There is a check between inflammation and immune suppression. Okay, so it should be balanced enough so that the immune inflammation doesn't go on prolong to such an extent that it causes severe damage to tissues and organs and causes the death of a patient. So there is what is called immune homeostasis. How do you modulate? Immunity, that's the right word to use rather than say, how do you improve immunity? So what are the factors that influence immunity against viruses? We know physical fitness is very important. Comorbid conditions, your hypertension, diabetes can reduce your ability to fight the infections. Aging, if you're elderly population, you can succumb to infection because the T cell response is lower in age population compared to that of uh, the youth populations. Nutrition status is very important, I told you. Sleep is a very, very important factor for fighting infections. Okay, this, uh, if you don't have proper sleep, your T-cell responses and the B-cell responses are curtailed. Stress is a very, very important aspect because stress can release a lot of stress hormones, like cortisol, which can numb the immune response. And immunocompromised conditions, as I said to you, is also very, very important. So we have stress from outside. So what, what is what's important here is you already have a psychological stress because of the COVID infection. Your isolation is, you're being, you're being isolated. People are, are having isolation anxiety. They don't have sleep. Okay, they also have some symptoms. They have nobody to take care of them. And that can cause a lot of apprehension, a lot of fear. And that can have a uh, devastating problem for these patients. So if you can help them to cope with it properly, reduce uh, tension, reduce anxiety, make them relax completely by using yoga techniques or whatever it is, that can be very, very useful in this, in this population. Secondly, people with obesity. Okay, so obesity, obese people have more adipocytokines which can trigger inflammation. Suppress, suppress the application of T and B cells, okay? And they are, though, they are, though they're obese, they produce more of leptin, but the immune cells fail to act, again, act with respect, respond to this leptin, okay? That's what is called immunological energy, we call them as. Immunological energy means the immune system is no longer able to respond to the leptin molecule. In normal con conditions, leptin molecule would have enhanced the immune response, but in these obese patients, it no longer enhances the immune response, okay? And as I said to you, the malnutrition is again one more important cause. And uh, this is very important for us to understand that over the years, we have a lot of microbes which are invading us and causing a lot of diseases. And uh, we have been seeing a different uh, bunch of viral diseases, right from HIV, Hendra, Dengue, and you have SARS and avian flu. And now you have SARS COT2, COT2. And that's because of our man's uh, contact with the animal world, okay? Because of increased domestication of species, and increase reliance on animal meat and uh, being in close contact with animals, the viruses which are there, the zoonotic viruses which are there, are also coming into, transferring into human, human to humans, humans as well. And that is what is causing all these problems today. Very important, that's why as we say that we stay away from animal meat and we also try to adopt veganism, okay? So 
as I said to you, uh, told you about the first line of defense, the surface immunity. The second line of defense was your neutrophils, the innate immunity. And the third line of defense was the adaptive immunity. So here, this is what I said. Even in the nasal tract, you can see the virus is entering inside. You have the macrophages there. You have the complement system there. You have T cells, NK cells. All these things are present in the nasal mucosal lining, which can really mount an immune response. This is the immediate response which happens. Okay. So in pneumonia, what happens, especially in SARS CoV 2? So you have the alveoli in the periphery of the lungs. Okay. Uh, this is the area where all the gas exchange takes place. And when there is a pneumonia, what happens? There is inflammation of the alveoli. The virus goes there. There's inflammation is there. There's edema, collection of fluid, and there's consolidation of the lungs causing pneumonia. Okay. This is a very, very important aspect. So how does it happen is by when there is a edema is because of the leaky blood vessels. Blood vessels, blood vessels become very, very leaky because of the inflammation, because of the inflammatory mediators and the cytokines. And this can cause the problem. So I won't go into deep details. And this is how it is. I have cytokines which are initial response, innate response, adaptive, adaptive response here. And this is the kind of cytokines which are released here. And what they have found out in SARS-CoV-2 is the IF and gamma is a very, very important cytokine. is released as a part of the adaptive T cell response is very, very low okay, in this population, people who have the SARS-CoV-2. So especially they don't know what is the reason why the IF and gamma is there. The cytokine storm, storm is mainly because of the IF and alpha and beta and the TNF family and IL-12 which has been released. Okay, This is what is causing the cytokine storm. And it is initial phases of it. And if it is prolonged for a longer time, then it becomes a problem. So one is, again, one. this is one aspect. Second aspect which I want to talk to you is we are happy to see the many number of asymptomatic cases in India. Okay, The virulence of this organism in India is behavior of this particular virus in India is entirely different from what is seen in the West. Okay, you're not seeing a cytokine storm here. You're not seeing people just collapsing on the roads. Okay, you're not seeing, uh, uh, you don't, you're not seeing 30% of the population being on ventilators here. Okay, only hardly 5% of those critical patients are going on the ventilators and 80% of them are going to be asymptomatic. So it is, people talk about herd immunity. We don't know whether it's true or not, but there are certain factors which can probably see that we are we are having this kind of a subdued immune response. Okay, what is important? What you can do in yoga and Ashpati here is to improve mucosal immunity. Nature kriya can be done, pranayama can be done, asanas which increase the tidal volume, the post expiratory volume, respiratory uh, airway. Okay, uh, reduce the reactivity of the airways and improve the lung function test. So all these things can be very useful here. And diet which are anti-inflammatory in nature. I'm not talk about more about this. I have more speakers who are going to talk more on this. I'll leave it to them, the diet and other things. But I just want to share one important research which is published about fasting. So people talk about using fasting for infections. So what is important to understand here is fasting is very, very good when you have a bacterial infection because you want to produce a ketoacidosis. You want to produce ketones, which can have a detrimental effect on the bacterial growth as well as on the bacterial toxin. Whereas the same thing for viruses is a... Uh, should not be done. It is very bad for having uh, having a fasting for viral infections. So what we talk more for viral infection is mainly to do with good nutrition, more amount of proteins, more of vitamins, and more little bit of glucose, which is enough to sustain the immune response against the viruses. So I just want to play a small video about a small research study, which has been published by the journal called Cell, a group of researchers from US. So I'd like you to share this video with all of you.
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rao. I think uh, it was very interesting to see the comprehensive view of what is immune system, how it works, and what are the most relevant points with regard to COVID-19. There are a few questions which have come uh, from the audience. Uh, and I would like uh, you to pay attention if you have any specific uh, research or any study which has um, come to support about uh, herbal medicine, number one, uh, Vastra Dhoti, uh, Pranayam, one specific audience asked for the Vastrika Pranayam, uh, chest pack or throat pack, fasting you have already answered. So if we have any evidence on uh, these treatments supporting or improving our immunity. Okay, let me just go to the first question on herbal medicine. Yeah. Uh, we do use Tulsi, we use ginger, we use neem, we use several things which are there available in the kitchen as a part of our remedies. And nobody can stop this uh, from, uh, from using this because they're also food. Food is also a part of the food for us. Okay. So we can use them uh, as far as the herbs are concerned for our own treatment. This should not be a problem. Okay. One is that. And secondly, there are people who are content, content saying that the herbs are belonging only to Ayurveda. But Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, you see, all of them more or less use the same kind of herbs for everything. You just call them by different names, but they're all the same. Okay. So there should not be a confusion on this. So anybody can use the herbal medicine. So for example, we may use curcumin from extract of turmeric. Whereas they may use turmeric in a full form, a different form altogether. So the way you use the form of using the particular hub varies from system to system. Curcumin and so We are using it is what defines us from the other people. One. Second thing is uh, you're talking about NCSM bill and other things. Let them not uh, discuss about this uh, turmeric because that's not part of this particular uh, webinar. And uh, magnetized effect water on COVID-19, we really don't know about the effects of magnetized water on COVID-19. There's no study done on this. This is a virus which is very, very new, three months old, and uh, people are just trying to understand how the behavior of this virus. So we still don't know how this magnetized. People are talking about ozone therapy. People are trying to use hyperbaric oxygen. People are trying to use acupuncture. People are using TCM, traditional well, medicine. Matter. But we still don't have evidence for all these things. But how does pranayama improve immunity? I would like to tell you probably is it helps in reducing the airway reactivity. It helps in preventing flu by improving the mucosal immune defenses. Okay, this is a very, very important aspect of the immunity, improving the mucosal immune defenses. And if your mucosal immune defense is good, then you probably may not contract the disease also. We don't know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is... Dr. Raghavendra, I think uh, there was one important uh, point which was brought in by uh, a panelist in another yes. webinar which I was attending is that you know uh, COVID-19 is a very new condition so there is no evidence against COVID-19 in any system of medicine or any uh, uh, form of science so instead of looking for evidence at this moment what is more important is that whatever you feel is going to work against uh, this virus or any viral condition in general or uh, any respiratory illnesses in general or uh, anything which helps boosting or improving your immunity in general. Those all principles should be applied in this particular case because that is the only thing which we can do quickly. If we look for the evidence before we start applying the principles or before we start applying the treatments, then probably it will be too late. So I think uh, that is one way forward for us to understand that, you know, anything which actually helps in the uh, improvement of immunity or anything which generally works on, uh, against the viral conditions should all be employed as our treatment strategies or in containment of this virus. So there is no copyright of any system of medicine against the treatment of COVID-19, whatever we are able to do in our uh, possible uh, you know, opportunities, wherever we find an opportunity to uh, um, deal with these patients, we should be able to do, and we should be doing it in, uh, in the best possible way we can. Uh, do you support this view? 
Uh, no doubt, we need to do a lot of work on research on trying to find out what can be done. Even before you do the research, you start using these interventions for population, and see how or how does it how does it uh, pan out. It's very very important because nobody knows what is happening. But always be cautious. Don't try to err because if you take this kind of advisory saying that you're improving, you're already doing yoga, the immunity is going to be good, and you know that the disease is a wrong concept. So you should always be on the cautious side. Do this as well. Do everything possible to improve immunity. At the same time, be cautious. Maintain the social distancing norms and everything else possible to prevent yourself from contracting this infection. Thank you, Dr. Agvinder Rao. I think uh, now the next panelist, we will move on to Dr. B.D. Jyadananda Murthy. He is a very renowned uh, person, very senior yoga and athletic physician. Currently, the Chief Medical Officer of Jindal Natural Care Institute and the former Director of Central Council for Research in Yoga and Naturopathy, as well as National Institute of Naturopathy. Both uh, these are the apex institutions of uh, Ministry of Ayush, Government of India. Now, I invite Dr. Murthy to uh, please uh, speak. What is his view on the naturopathy and yoga for COVID-19? Um, Open to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rajesh Singh. Uh, will you have camera towards me? Thank you, Dr. Agvindra, who has uh, scientifically explained the immunology and the pathology of the COVID virus. Uh, of course, now nobody uh, claims that they have done any research for against this COVID, it's a research, it's a new thing. It, uh, this COVID itself is a three months or four months baby, six months baby. So it takes years up together for the research thing. Uh, with my um, uh, 44 years of experience, uh, uh, so we, uh, the naturopathy and yoga is nothing but we call say, uh, mind body medicine, holism, holistic approach. We have to improve the, uh, the mental health, the physical health, uh, immunity and the even gut health, digestive system has to be uh, perfect. The proper uh, uh, nutrition, absorption, all things have to be taken care. So in this uh, COVID aspect is uh, mainly as we are uh, well known told is the uh, main major thing is uh, maintain social distance, uh, continuously wash, hourly wash up the uh, total, the hand wash and also uh, protect yourself and protect others by wearing mask that is there. Apart from that one, uh, as per the immunology is concerned is, uh, what I have made some study there, the continuous sipping of hot water drinking for 48 hours in the initial first two days, it is found to be see, because it can kill the virus. Because it increases the temperature, if you go on drinking and continuously drinking hot water, it will body temperature rises, the sweating also causes. So with this aspect, uh, it can uh, control or reduce the replication of viruses. So first thing is to, uh, for first two, day, two days, 48 hours, continuous sipping of hot water drinking, that is uh, essential. Rest thing is we have to drink sufficient water, three to four liters of water. The moment you get up in the morning, we say in generally, Prabhati, Uttistate, Ushapanam, drinking of uh, about up to one liter of hot water drinking, especially in coral, this coronavirus, we advocate hot water rather than the normal or tepid water drinking. So to boost the immunity, uh, we, we always advocate in naturopathy for vitamin C products, that lemon, amla, orange, lemon, any water, etc. natural glucose, that is also there. And uh, iron-rich food is apple, black raisins, black dates, amrut, goa fruits, and even ragi porridge. It's also rich in iron. Uh, it can be taken all over India. So these are available also, easily available, that thing. And so, uh, third thing is uh, zinc, which uh, is also for required for the uh, boosting immunity. That is papaya seeds and uh, watermelon seeds are found to be very useful. And the seeds only, they are not costly also. That should be used. And uh, also with amino acids, which are uh, well present in multigrain sprouts, can be taken ample. Apart from that one, omega-3 in uh, about 30, 40 years plus case, those who are diabetic, 
hypertension or coronary pro or artery problem, they should go for the flax seeds, walnuts, and fish oil capsules also. These are all essential for 40 plus aged people as a therapeutic measures. And uh, we have found uh, useful in experience in Tulsi Karda. So that is uh, even uh, helpful in malaria and other fever condition also that can be used here also. Tulsi Karda, you take 20 leaves of Tulsi and uh, 10 uh, pepper, black pepper, five grams of turmeric powder and 10 grams of uh, ginger. You just crush it and boil it well and filter it and add organic jaggery and drink. It's a good tonic, a good uh, relishable drink. It can be adding with green, uh, black jaggery, organic jaggery. It can be uh, relished. People can enjoy two to three times a day. That is also found useful in this one. And you know, naturopathy, we advocate for all diseases. At least one time you should have take the raw food, only raw diet. That is any seasonal, regional fruits are available apart from above what they are told earlier. But any, any seasonal, regional fruits, all fruits are good. And any seasonal, regional salads, they're all good. good. And any multigrain sprouts. So we need uh, the essential uh, the proteins also, and which are easily digestible and absorbable. So sprouts, multigrain, all any grams can be uh, sprouted and taken. It could be the green gram, Bengal gram, or the alpha alpha, Ragi, any sprouts, anything can be sprouted. And multi-ground, uh, then they will, again, we should use the multi-vegetable chutneys, leaf vegetable chutneys, adding Indian spices, onion, garlic, coconut, uh, green chilies, etc. That is also, and vegetable soup, hot soup. So these are all the, the nutritious food, easily absorbable. So we can Im improve the, the gut health also. And uh, all the, all the um, uh, essential nutrition are available with this raw food. And easy to digest, easy to, you don't need to cook also. Whatever is available, anybody can, it's affordable also, it's not costly. No need to cook also, it saves time also. At least one time a day, so to keep the immunity boosting up. So this one time raw diet is found to be in all diseases and the same thing principle can be used for in this condition also. As far as naturopathy treatment is concerned, so as like we have seen even the animals, whenever they get sick, they take sun bath and air bath. So 15 to 30 minutes daily, we should expose our body for sun bath and air bath. And of course, you can keep wet pack on, uh, for, on, on the head and the scalp and drink two to three liters of, of water so that you don't get giddiness or weakness. Or you can take some juices also in, in that time. So sun bath is essential for vitamin D, free of cost and uh, nature, and you'll relax also. And it gives you warm, warmness also to the body. And uh, hot or neutral immersion baths in the full tub. If you don't have full tub, you can hey, use any tub sitting up. So a full body, full immersion is very good. If not, uh, sitting up in hot, hot bath also increases the body temperature. That also because it's found to be, it can kill the coronaviruses or it can stop the replication and uh, as we are told in the BC because corona is uh, leading to the respiratory problem asthma bath is well uh, it's an old uh, for last 30 years we have been doing in naturopathy asthma bath is very effective in uh, expectoration treatment that is also so it is also can be given at home or anyway it's a technique as to we learn that's all and uh, even the lungs drainage therapy is also chest massage. And that is also very effective. These are the treatment aspects. It can be done, uh, even hot foot arm bath also is useful. So such thing can be done in at home remedies also. And regarding comes to yoga therapy, all yogi kriyas, the, the woman dauti, kunjal, it can be done for three to four days continuously and followed by alternative day can be done. Of course, Vastra Dhoti, I know because a common man cannot do Vastra Dhoti. It's a tedious job, so we can exclude Vastra Dhoti, but whereas even Oman Dhoti itself is very helpful in non-respiratory uh, respiratory and digestive disorders. So Oman Dhoti or Kunjal, that is good. For Jal Neti, Rubber Neti can be done daily. Kapal Bhati is very essential. Kapal Bhati, the breathing, first breathing, expectoration. Uh, then uh, salt water gargling daily can be done. 
and also uh, simhasana or simhakriya as uh, advocated by simhakriya advocated by sadguru vasudev uh, krishna foundation that is also effective so if we do it for 21 times uh, the simhakriya that can be done and pranayam among pranayamas bastrikand ujjayi are good uh, vibration for the whole body surya namaskara if you do it uh, loudly chanting <coughs> Om Mitraya Namaha, like the 12 mantras should be chanted loudly and 12 rounds, that is also very effective. Of course, meditation and prayers as a daily routine, especially in the COVID area, in the lockdown uh, season, in this uh, duration, it is very helpful for the total mental health also. And among all that, the laughing class, there are uh, laughing class, laughing practice, four types of laughing. that can also be done daily uh, during this and group small group laughing classes also can by maintaining social distance and uh, as a holism holistic approach so total relaxation whatsoever it may be stress domestic stress professional business whatever it may be we have to get rid of the stress if stress is there so it will it will bring your total immunity down so any virus can attack any bacteria can attack any disease can attack So mentally, total health. No, whatsoever it may be the, the surrounding factor, ground condition, but we should be relaxing totally, uh, physically, mentally, all that thing. So let us lead to a simple life, moral life, and see the 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 whole globe is uh, burning in this situation. So God Almighty is uh, right in its own action. Maybe we have spoiled the nature in all aspects: the forest, water, water. the sky the air everything is spoiled everything is adulterated food is adulterated nothing we have let for sake of earning money world was going fast jet economy growth now it has come down to down so economy is not only things mainly in this our health is much important than health this said to be any questions please very nice sir actually uh, there is a question uh, i hmm. think you should answer that uh, the question is that you know there is enough evidence that hmm. uh, the circadian rhythm the disturbance in circadian rhythm our hmm. sleep and waking cycles hmm. uh, that disturbs our psychological state causes stress and changes our hormone and immune reactions so yes. should we not promote uh, the good sleeping habits and uh, a good routine for the people because you know uh, most of the world at this moment is uh, under lockdown and uh, the circadian rhythm is completely uh, disturbed uh, so should we not promote uh, the uh, uh, this aspect uh, a good sleeping habits and the uh, maintaining a good routine to the people who are watching this yeah total health the holistic body band sleep itself is a medicine people are because for the sake of earning or job or permission or in profession or even the stress we lose our uh, sleep the so sleep itself is a medicine sleep is uh, much more important than any food and nutrition so you, you, we can be without food for uh, two three days but if you can't sleep if you sleep one night don't sleep one night properly so you are disturbed other day so sleep it's as per the modern science also sleep itself is a medicine we must have the proper all all the routine that natural life immunity anything comes health comes only through the your lifestyle day to day routine that is uh, uh, the daily habits should be proper more or less life has to be regulated in all aspects in food in drinking water in exercise in sleep in profession in your mental relaxation these are all total health health without this basic thing you cannot buy health sleep has to be regulated is like well, the food is important more than important is the proper sleep sound sleep so that your whole body our whole system our organs rejuvenate if you don't sleep then you will mind mind won't get rest and relaxation so then your whole the next day life is very disturbed perfect sir uh i think uh, uh we will we will bring you in uh, whenever there is any other question which uh, we feel uh, is something which we should or or 
you can feel free to comment anytime uh, yeah yeah would... this actually what i have told is a simple thing which can be followed all indian spices can be followed at home nothing like all herbs tulsi or adrak or these things these are all the ginger these are all available in, and you know so what i told is out of my rich practice all over india so this only which can be followed at easily the yoga kriyas can be followed at problem and the sun bath and the diet pattern laughing class that are total mental relaxation these are all can be followed and what i advocated the food also is easily followable and definitely it will uh, help in boosting your health of course corona we have to maintain distance we have to be preventive aspect that has to be done sure sir uh to the audience uh, i would like to mention that you know we are continuously taking questions so you can post your questions on uh, any platform where you have joined us live on uh next panelist i want to bring uh, in is uh, dr sunil kumar padel uh he is uh, one of the senior most physicians in uh, nepal joining from kathmandu uh, dr sunil am i audible am yes I yes yes okay you have to increase your volume please your your volume is very low okay. can you hear me now very yes, low yes yes this one is better yeah this is better still better now, now better. better still you increase okay okay uh my gratitude and good morning to everyone so let's go right away in uh, I'll, i'll like to share my screen and see let's not waste any time okay today we are going to talk about lifestyle changes uh, and um, can you hear me now yes okay okay so today we are talking about lifestyle changes and super food for super immunity okay so all these things all this recording also will be available on, on the new youtube channel we are I'm going to launch soon life positive 9 if anyone is interested uh there is my phone number that will be available uh at the end of the session so for the time being let's go to the slide uh uh so let's just summarize basically dr murthy um, has already told uh come to each and every point okay so the best way to boost our immunity and mm, be healthy um uh is return to nature we all know so what is return to nature we'll go into that so let's go uh, some there was there were questions about circadian rhythm rhythms very fantastic question yes circadian rhythm uh, affects our immunity for sure if we are not regular there have been fantastic researches and we the science community the medical science is very clear now that if you don't sleep at night you are more prone to diseases and you are more prone to ncds non communicable diseases as well as communicable diseases so sleep is must and there has been uh, numerous researches and the latest one i'm talking about like uh, 2019 the research says not too much of nanda it around 7 to 8 hours of sleep is very good channel bunt that's that's good enough good not prepared much okay. uh then um, 7 to 8 hours of sleep and then uh, natural water i I'll, I'll, i'll talk about water and I also would like to focus on water which kind of water do we drink 4 to 8 purified water 
And I'm against purified water because there are a few researchers that shows uh, purifying water the modern way, the modern Western way, uh, takes out all the essential nutrients, essential minerals, and also there have been thousands of researchers questioning the pH of water. We all know our body is uh, um, an alkaline medium and we need to maintain that with alkaline water, always, always, always. And rather than any fancy reverse osmosis and other things, uh, I would prefer a candle filter and we all know uh, about COVID. Co COVID-19, many, many of the things are still unclear because this is very, very new thing for us. But one thing is clear, uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus cannot survive on copper for more than four hours. We know it for sure, it uh, will be alive on uh, papers and even on plastic materials for up to three days. So that shows copper has got some uh, benefits. So natural water, candle filter, that too, spring water if possible. Otherwise, tap water, you just filter it uh, with a candle filter. You get uh, uh, copper candle filters everywhere. So you can use that. And uh, Dr. Uh, Raghavendra Rao has already told about the effect of uh, exercises. So I'd like to focus on exercise first. Exercise is not just doing yoga or just running or hitting the gym. There are three kinds of exercises we all need to be clear, okay? The, the, wh what is the most important exercise is according to researchers and according to medical science, that means aerobic exercise that keeps your heart rate high, that makes you gasping, all these things. And yoga, I'd like to emphasize on yoga because yoga is such a beautiful thing. You can modify the way you want. You want resistance, your re uh, if you want resistance training, you can do it with yoga. You want um, stretching, you can do it with yoga. You can uh, benefit the internal organs with yoga, no matter what, okay? So yoga, cardio and yoga. Then second thing is we need, our body needs resistance training. Resistance training means uh, like weightlifting or walking in the garden or digging, walking on the fields, all these are resistance training, okay? So that uh, builds up your muscles and keeps your bones healthy. And third, you can talk about stretching, but anyhow, we can modify yoga the way we want. So I'm not going into that very much. And Dr. Murthy has already told about pranamas and kriyas. These are very much essential, okay? So I'm not going to in depth with that. Uh, the, another part, why, what was missing was meditations. So there, um, we all know COVID-19 is a very new virus. Uh, we don't know how it's gonna respond uh, to many of the things, including um, pharmacotherapy, but meditation we know is excellent for balancing the immune functions. Okay, uh, so I'd love to add meditations and there are thousands of uh, types of meditation you can, mm, you can use any. Um, then another thing uh, I'd like to focus is uh, on vegetarianism. Yes, being vegetarian is very much essential. We already know the science, medical science already knows that more than 70% of the virus diseases came from eating meat, came from animals, right? More than 60%. It's a statistics given by WHO recently. So being vegetarian will help, no doubt. And also another uh, problem that uh, alters our immunity is uh, addiction. So we need to be addiction free. Doesn't matter whether it is alcohol, smoking, all those things, because we all know this suppresses our immune reactions, immune functions, all those things. Uh, being vegetarian, you can already know about plenty of veggies, salads, fruits, all those things. Healthy routine should be always, always there should be a routine your body needs to follow, otherwise it gets exhausted. 
the moment you get exhausted, it's obvious that the immune function gets exhausted. So healthy routine should be there. It needs to cycle. It needs to be a healthy routine. And sunbath, I'd like to emphasize on sunbath because there have been thousands of thousands of research on sunbath and immune functions. Okay, so uh, previously we used to believe that uh, morning sunbath used to be good, but now the science says mainly in metros because of the pollution. Uh, what our body needs for vitamin D is UVB, ultraviolet B rays, and uh, we the science knows clearly that ultraviolet B will be maximum in the noon. So according to science, now 10 to 2 o'clock sunbath is excellent. And ultraviolet B cannot penetrate uh, the glass. So it, there should be direct contact to your skin. And there are many people who uh, take take sunbath after using sunscreen for our skin it is very obvious that we don't need sunscreen okay and there has been a research that uh, spf 5 nowadays in the market you are using spf 75 so the research says if you use spf 5 on a skin then your body your skin will not be able to use uh, will not be able to manufacture vitamin d for up to 3 months so we need to be cautious. You can use sunscreen on your face, but not on your body. We don't need basically the wheat, the dark skin color um, uh, filters. Uh, and there are very less, there are no chances of skin cancer as we are exposed to sun, as it is for the foreigners or albinos. Um, then we, we have talked about vegetarian diet. I'd also like to talk about not only vegetarian diet, like we need to also eat as less uh, um, uh, food, artificial foods as possible. Okay, we need to use high fiber diet and it needs to be balanced, all the things and healthy balance. Uh, fasting a day every week, is an excellent way to keep your immune functions optimum. Uh, Dr. Janak will be addressing on that, I hope. So I'll talk less about fasting, but fasting is fantastic on killing uh, and keeping your immune system balanced and optimum. Uh, positive thinking, yeah, the immune function starts from here too. This has got fantastic results on immune function. Um, let me tell you flatly, the difference between a poor and rich, a talented and non-talented, a successful and unsuccessful, and also a disease and a healthy person. The difference is over here. So positive thinking helps. So um, this is the, uh, I've just summarized few of the lifestyle changes that uh, our body needs. And I'd like to, uh, you to see on the screen, I've, uh, shown you a small um, um, research paper on microbial exposure during early life. You can see there have been many hypotheses, including uh, BCG vaccine and other things, but what, why we are so immune, why less people are dying in Asia is because we are exposed to micro, uh, microbes early in life because uh, Dr. Rajesh and we, we were in UK for, uh, in the Virgin Islands for almost seven years. And I'll tell you, we did not have no fever for seven years. We didn't have no cough for seven years. We didn't have no cold for seven years. So in the West, it is very difficult to get exposed to all these pathogens. Over here in Indian subcontinent, we are exposed to cold virus, influenza virus, rhinovirus, all these things. So that has kept our immunity a little bit high. So that could be one of the reasons. This is one of the hypotheses I'm uh, uh, putting on, but there, this is research backed. You can see on the screen, uh, microbial exposure during early life has got persistent effect till your death on natural killer T cells function. And this applies to the virus too, okay? So we are lucky, let's say we are lucky. And today we are, I was supposed to focus on superfoods. Okay, what are the superfoods? Um, superfoods are the foods that are used by the centenarians, like 
uh, I've researched extensively for almost 10 years uh, in those areas where people live more than 100 or more than 90. And these are the foods they eat a lot and their immune function is high. That's why this, uh, this is lead to the longevity also. So the superfoods, we are going to the superfoods like green foods, veggies and salads, fruits and nuts and three, uh, fermented foods, germinated foods, colostrum, whole grains and legumes. So we already know, and Dr. Janak will be talking on this, uh, veggies and salads, so I'll not be touching that part. I'll just show you a few slides. Uh, fruits and nuts, he'll be touching on that, so I'll not touch that part. Germinated foods, Dr. Murthy has already talked about that. Uh, whole grains and legumes, Dr. Janak, he's, uh, he'll tell you about that. So I'll talk regarding a few more interesting points, okay? Uh, so let's go for um, these uh, things. It, can you see it on the screen or not? Otherwise, I'll just uh, keep it a little bit bigger so that it will be easier for you guys, okay? So the immune... Mm, so green foods, let's talk about green foods because very less people will be talk about, talking about this. What are the green foods? Let's be very clear. The green foods I've divided into two chapters. One, um, wheat grass, barley grass, all these things. And second is seafood, seaweeds, okay? So there are many things. There have been many researchers uh, telling you the efficiency of uh, uh, green foods on uh, immune function. So the current one you are seeing on the screen is uh, uh, the active oligosaccharides isolated from wheat grass. And that can lead to uh, immune functions, uh, balancing the immune function and enhancing it against the virus as well. So let's go about this green foods. Uh, we know about wheat and uh, barley grass, but we don't know about many other things that are called seaweeds, like blue green algae, you can see on the screen, spirulina, Wakami, kelp, nori, hijiki, all these are um, called seaweeds. Uh, these are used basically in Japanese foods, okay? Uh, if you go to Japanese restaurants, they wa wrap the rice into, an, uh, into a green film. That those are called uh, uh, nori hijiki, okay? The blue green algae leaf. They are highly nutritionally concentrated form of food, okay? They've got fantastic amount of chlorophyll, fibers, almost all amino acids, omega-3 antioxidants, minerals, including selenium and iodine that are very much essential for our immune functions. Uh, Dr. Raghavendra has already talked about that. And there, uh, there are many how super seaweed, the seaweed stimulates our immune function. And on virus as well, uh, on the screen you can see uh, the seaweeds uh, can also have anti-HIV effects, okay? So it, it has got some antiviral uh, functions as well. I believe so. So, um, um, but about Corona, uh, about COVID-19, we don't know anything about it yet, but I believe so there should be because if it can act ag against HIV, it should be able to act against um, COVID-19 as well. So about veggies, uh, we know about veggies and Dr. Janak will be talking about veggies, but uh, right now I'll tell you, allium group, we should not forget, these are antivirals. I'm, I'm focusing you on antiviral veggies, okay? Onion, garlic, all the bulbs and leaves, okay? Are excellent antivirals. Capsicum, all the capsicum group are excellent antivirals and watercress. Water Chris, what do you call Rajas watercress in Hindi? So that many people should know. This is available. This is a vegetable that grows on all wetlands. This has got round, thick, wet leaves. Uh, we call, uh, in, in Nepal, we call that uh, Pani Ghas, or it grows on the, uh, it's excellent. And according to the researchers, this is the second best food ever. On, in the world. The first is being almond, the watercress is another. This is available all over the world, uh, no matter wherever the, you go. If there is some small pod, it starts growing automatically, watercress. 
uh, you can Google if you are not um, very clear on watercress. So the second uh, is fruit, seasonal fruits. Uh, and I like to focus on acai fruit and berries, which has got fantastic functions, fantastic, helpful, very much helpful for our immune function as well. And we all know about dried fruits and nuts. Uh, beta carotene, vitamin C, E, uh, all these things Dr. Janak will be talking on. And if you'd like to, if you'd like some references or research papers, I'm, I'll be happy to provide you that as well. Uh, let's go to another interesting chapter is fermented foods. Okay. Uh, fermented foods. Uh, many people don't know about fermented foods, but I, I, was born in India and grew up in Nepal. And so I know fermented foods in Nepal has got fantastic variety of fermented foods. So what are the fermented foods? Let's go to that, okay? In India, we use very less fermented foods. So we need to focus. I'm going to focus on this uh, chapter a little bit more. Uh, these are also called bioactive and functional foods, okay? So yogurt is a uh, uh, fermented food. Dosa and idli batter is a fermented food. All the prebiotic, probiotic, all the bacteria that are very much essential and very much helpful for us are called uh, fermented foods, okay? Uh, so, but when we cook dosa and idli, I feel um, I've, I've uh, reference, a uh, few reference to the researchers as well. Uh, the scientists believe the good bacteria get killed. So maybe you can just taste a little bit of idli and dosa batter after it gets fermented. Uh, here we are talking about bacterial fermentation. These are called, uh, uh, these are called bacterial fermentation. These prebiotic and probiotics are available in buttermilk. Buttermilk is one of the best food we use in India, but we don't use many other fermented food that are essential. Uh, tofu is also a fermented food that's excellent. Uh, have you heard about fermented bamboo shoots? That's excellent fermented food as well. Here you just take a baby small bamboo shoot, you cut it whenever um, the bamboo is around one or two feet and you slice it up and put it on a vessel and keep it on the sun. After five, 10 days, it gets fermented. It has got very sour taste, okay? This is because of the lactobacillus, a variety of lactobacillus fermentation. It has got prebiotics, probi uh, probiotics, everything. And the same thing applies to fermented veggies as well. You just pluck all whatever the veggies you want. In Nepal, they use uh, mainly tori. Tori is uh, what do you call uh, mustard, mustard greens. Okay. And they also use. Basically, after eating radish, we throw out the leaves, but you can collect those leaves and uh, take a vessel, push it and keep it over there uh, and let it ferment. You don't have to use anything. You don't have to use no bacteria, mm, uh, nothing. You don't have to use nothing. You just push it nicely and uh, cover the cap and keep it uh, on the sun and after a few days it starts oozing out that means it's fermenting inside so that's the way to ferment veggies and after that you can cook make a soup out of it or you can dry in the himalayan region uh, in nepal they dry these fermented vegetables it has got thousands of varieties of uh, bacteria as lactobacillus uh, strains and uh, the spores which can after entering in into our body it works as a fantastic uh, formatted bioactive and functional. So there, uh, you, there is also a trend uh, I found in Himalayan countries, uh, including Nepal, they make urdal veggie chunks. So you can use any vegetable you want and uh, you mix urdal, urdal and then make chunks and let it dry, let it ferment and dry in the sun. And Whenever there is nothing available, you can use that as a vegetable. Uh, kalpi, kalpi is another thing. Um, I think everyone know about some pickle, pickling the uh, ripe uh, cucumbers, the brown ripe cucumbers. If you pickle it, it starts fermenting. It has got sour taste, that's called kalpi. And 
abroad, like in um, Turkey, Egypt, China, Japan, Korea, all these people use kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut, natto, dauchi, hamchoi, temp. These are fermented pickles. These are also available in your supermarket. And these are excellent immunomodulators. Okay, this is stimulate and balance our immune system because 90% of our immune system is based on our guts, in our intestines. We need to remember that the immune system lies in our stomach. So, and it also, uh, the, if your gut bacteria is healthy, that also enhances your functioning of your brain as well. There are many neurological disorders and immune uh, confusion that are treated by these foods. Um, we know we just don't need to stimulate or hyper stimulate our immune system because that can lead to another um, autoimmune disorders. So we need to balance and autoimmune disorders are very difficult to treat. These foods will be very much essential for that as well, not only balancing our immune system for COVID. So all this uh, research paper you can um, go through eating fermented food can give you a boost to your immune system, all this. There are many research papers available uh, online. There is a uh, scientist, Dr. Tamang in India, he's very famous on uh, doing researches on this group as well. He has been using fermented foods for treating gastrointestinal disorders, including ulcers, everything. Uh, the last and very interesting, another immune boosting food we are talking about is colostrum. Um, I hope everyone knows about colostrum. Do you? Colostrum, uh, after giving birth, all mammals, after giving birth to a baby, will the mother will ooze out very high fat, high protein uh, milk for one to three days. That is called colostrum. I don't know about you, but I've seen many communities in India and in Nepal, after the cow gives birth to a baby, they milk the uh, cow and the whole community shares that colostrum. It's spreading that immunity to the whole village. And we already know because colostrum has got high amount of IgG, immunoglobulins, that immunoglobulins are essential uh, for the baby's health, okay? That's how, that's why we always promote uh, um, breastfeeding our kids because all the immunity, all the things that mother is exposed to is uh, that goes, that uh, goes to their blood, uh, that goes to their breast milk and in turn, the new babies, the infant gets that immunity from the mother. So colostrum is one of the very much essential things, essential foods for uh, our immune system. And how to, how to use it? Uh, this COVID uh, era, I've tried colostrum three times and it, 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 it is excellent. And there have been thousands of researches, if you Google, um, the effects of bo bovine immunoglobulins on our immune functions. I don't know about it works, whether it works for COVID, but I, I am uh, very much positive it might because there have been researches that it works for allergies, it works for infections, viral infections. So I, for, I hope for COVID as well. So we can use colostrum, cow colostrum. Uh, the first day uh, when the cow give, gives birth to the baby, you collect the milk, keep for the kid, <laughs> keep for the calf, but collect, uh, there will be lots of amounts. First day, there will be like five, 10 times the amount uh, of the regular uh, yield. So collect some, uh, then you can filter that under aseptic precautions, you can drink that directly, okay? Uh, many, uh, communities, they boil that milk and when it solidifies, they use sugar and use that, but I'm against that. Uh, it's better to drink the colostrum directly from the cow without cooking. And that has got tremendous effect on our immune functions as well. Colost colostrum has got all the immunoglobulins, growth factors, vitamin A, 
copper, zinc, and antioxidants. So this can be another fantastic foods. So whole grains to boost immune fun functions, uh, Dr. Janak will be talking on that. Uh, if uh, time permits, uh, I can also share about IUS recommendations for immunity, uh, like Indu Kantara uh, Kasaya, Agastha Rasayan, Yoga and Natural Lifestyle, Chur um, the IUS research uh, core team, uh, I think, uh, um, produced this. So if, I hope if you Google, you'll find, but I've, uh, uh, summarized three researches uh, on COVID by Ayush. So this has got everything like for clinical support, if somebody has got COVID, what? Uh, like gooseberries, tulsi, ginger, lemon, turmeric, 200 ml BD for adults, 100 ml for kids, yoga therapy, sunbath, naturopathic treatments. Dr. Murthy has already uh, talked about that. For irritation, if you have got throat irritation, salt, turmeric, and tulsi gargle, and there are some uh, herbals, herbal preparations, Ayurvedic preparations, Bresol, Haridrakan for upper respiratory tract allergies, frequent hot water, hot water with honey, Kasaya and Kara made out of Guduchi, chari, uh, Chiraita, Tulsi, Turmeric, Jira, Clove, Lemon, all those things. I think um, hot lemon, ginger, honey also helps. And for convulsions, if you are recovering, then Dasapulak, uh, Kachutram Kasaya, Indukantam Kasaya, uh, all these things, Rasayan Chikitsa, you and natural lifestyle, all these things uh, Ayush is recommending. Uh, we need to know, is balancing immunity or enhancing our immune function or modulating the immune functions is not like it, it can happen overnight. You need to maintain that all over your life. So there is no alternative about balancing your lifestyles and dietary habits. habits. It doesn't happen overnight. And we need to know there are more dangerous pathogens than COVID-19. So we need to get ready for that as well. And natural lifestyle is the only key. We need to balance. It's, I don't believe in like uh, stimulating the immune function. I believe in balance. Balance is uh, health. Uh, you might need minor amounts of poisons as well in your body, right? So it's about not uh, only enhancing the function, also by balance. So artificial lifestyle, artificial food stress, we know leads to overactive immune function. That also can lead to um, um, that also can lead to you getting exposed uh, to other diseases as well. Also, viva. Uh, also, COVID nineteen. So that summarizes my um, uh, presentation. So let's see uh, if there are any questions. Dr. Rajesh? Uh, Dr. Sunil, I think uh, there is one very uh, interesting question which I would like to put to uh, Dr. Muthi. And the question yeah. is, what is the opinion or comment on this basic principle of naturopathy that germs don't cause disease, but only found in diseased conditions? Uh, here is the case of COVID-19. It's a virus. Is it because of unhygienic body or uh, unhealthy body or respiratory disease, which is predisposed in individual living complication? So what he's asking actually, uh, the, the anonymous don't know who the general belief we say that, you know, viruses or bacteria, they are created in a, uh, in a body which is uh, having a lot of accumulated morbid matter, unwanted material. So uh, since uh, COVID-19 is a viral condition, is it because our body is uh, uh, more ready to receive this virus or is it something else which we have to look at? Uh, sir, I think, uh, Muthi, sir, you have to unmute your phone. You have to unmute it. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Hello. Yeah, yeah, we can hear. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hear no, you, can it? Ah. So. Uh, yeah. We see in uh, philosophy of nature cure uh, established hundred years back. It is told the bacteria are the secondary factors and the primary factor is the toxemia. 
foreign matter at all. But it, it, it may be, uh, uh, it is not fully, in this COVID case, it may not be fully correct, but not fully wrong also. Because it may not affect each and everybody. Immunity, of course, immunity, toxemia makes it uh, important. It can be it's an exceptional uh, case also, because the, here it is fast growing. It can attack anybody, even a 100% healthy person also can be attacked. So this is exception. We have to accept that one. But uh, but in order to uh, sustain that infection, the immunity is good. Uh, uh, we have to detoxify our body. As I told you, have to take uh, enriched food in vitamin C, vitamin, uh, vitamin zinc food, zinc rich food, uh, vitamin uh, that sorry iron rich food, all these things and uh, amino acid food, a lot of sprouts, natural food. And the Indian spices, it can be taken. It can be it can this infection can be controlled, and the viral multiplication can be uh, reduced. So it is a both aspect. I would I would like to add one more thing to what uh, Murthy sir said, and that is that uh, uh, majority of the cases in COVID nineteen are asymptomatic, which means that you know you don't have any uh, symptoms of the disease. Uh, number one, number two mm. is that uh, majority of the cases of positive cases of uh, COVID-19, which are uh, tested positive, which are admitted into hospital, uh, they do not have complications. Only about 20% uh, of the people actually need hospitalization. 80% don't even need hospitalization. Out of those Absolutely. people who are uh, tested positive, only 5% need critical care, which means that, you know, these are the serious people, the, those who need ventilators or life support systems. So what is happening with the 95% of the people of COVID-19, the self recovery is happening. It's your immune system, which is actually helping you to recover. So yes, uh, this is the time we should uh, actually promote the very healthy lifestyle, immune promoting lifestyle, you know, good diet, good nutrition, good sleep, you know, stress relieving habits. And these are very, very helpful in actually understanding that how even the deadly virus like COVID-19 is acting on our bodies. So uh, I would like to bring in uh, Dr. Abhay Sankar Gauda. Uh, he's the uh, Dean Ayush at Subharti University in Meerut, and uh, uh, he is our next panelist. So, welcome, Dr. Abhay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rajesh. Uh, it has been a wonderful uh, discussion from the morning uh, today afternoon. Um, I'll be sharing my screen. Um, I'll be talking about yoga and uh, immunity. Um, as we all know, uh, Samatvam Yoga Uchate is one of the uh, definitions given by uh, the yoga uh, brings equanimity. That is, uh, it brings not equality, it is equanimity. It, is, it brings a sense of balance, balance in the physical body as well as the uh, mind and the emotions and all the aspects of human existence. Now, yoga has eight limbs, yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. Most of the people only uh, uh, focus on the physical aspect of uh, asanas uh, practice. Uh, but uh, again, uh, universal ethics, individual ethics, uh, like uh, mental uh, practices are also very, very important uh, in case of uh, uh, yoga practices. Um, the advantages, uh, again, it is uh, easily integrated with any system of medicine. It's not necessarily uh, see that um, uh, yoga is uh, practiced uh, individually or something like that. It can be uh, practiced along with any system. It may be Ayurveda, maybe allopathy, maybe homeopathy, uh, any system of medicine. And also as a preventive aspect also uh, to maintain and uh, uh, to maintain good health as well as prevent diseases, it can be used it has uh, very less or adverse uh, very low or nil adverse effects and uh, it's a holistic approach with the answers to stress induced that is psychosomatic illnesses as well as modern day lifestyle disorders is uh, very very uh, important 
although many forms of yoga practice are safe uh, but uh, some are strenuous and may not be appropriate for everyone uh, one has to consider their age their physical abilities while uh, practicing uh, yoga uh, how it works it uh, again teaches the sustained muscular activity with the internally directed focus producing a self contemplative mental state so it it is not just an exercise it is Uh, to be uh, uh, proper observation proper uh, uh, breathing uh, that is uh, awareness is very important while doing yoga it's not just a form of exercise or uh, the way one does uh, gymnastics the way one does athletics it's not that so it is very important uh, that to have a sustained muscular activity that is very slow action i'll i'll be coming to that and it triggers neuro hormonal mechanisms that bring about uh, health benefits by suppression of sympathetic activity and uh, producing a relaxation response through elevation of parasympathetic activity that is a wonderful thing which uh, see till now the autonomic nervous system which has their uh, sim- uh, i mean sympathetic and parasympathetic aspects uh, where in uh, the stress uh, induces the sympathetic activity Uh, parasympathetic activity is very important to stay uh, healthy to be relaxed and that's what yoga does uh, it produces a relaxation response the psycho neuroimmunology effects of uh, stress uh, can be reversed by the practice of yoga now what is the psycho neuroimmunology effect again the uh, mind status of the mind for example stress is a simple uh, um, example where the mind is affected and because of that there will be uh, neuronal as well as uh, hormonal changes in the body especially because of stress hormones like cortisol etc and uh, these will affect the immu- immune system of the body uh, the immune system of the body it can uh, be altered to a autoimmune disorder or it can be altered to a hyperimmune status or the immunity status can be lowered these can be balanced by the practice of regular Uh, yogic practices now uh, how it works again yoga brings down the cortisol level uh, the beta endorphins are increased the in, decrease in um, interleukin 6 and tnf alpha in uh, chronic inflammatory diseases and also risk of cardiovascular events in obese subjects is decreased meditation also helps in uh, improving these um, uh, immunity factors a uh, simple uh, see one uh, who cannot do yogic practices can also practice some music therapy or uh, such uh, relaxative things which uh, will be uh, helpful in decreasing the cortisol uh, levels or uh, decrease the uh, interleukin 4 interleukin 2 uh, and increase interleukin 4 which is good and also allow for survival etc and uh, the stress response see as uh, shown by uh, the medical um, fraternity um, stress is uh, going to alter at the hpa axis that is hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis and uh, cre- create lot of hormonal imbalances in the body and this is a simple example of how it can create a, uh, increase heart rate and uh, increase blood pressure in the body by the stress response and when there is a relaxation response by practices like music therapy like yoga like relaxation uh, meditation and all that uh, the blood pressure also can be brought down uh, that is uh, of course uh, this is uh, voluntarily it can be brought down uh, there is no more uh, a saying that uh, autonomic nervous system is not in our control uh, we can control the autonomic nervous system by producing this relaxation response and a point to be noted here is stress response uh, may be automatic or autonomic uh, fully controlled by the autonomic system but relaxation response is uh, a thing where we can modify where we can uh, take control of the body's uh, changes uh, that is how um, relaxation response uh, affects uh, into better uh, health status uh, we can do it um, voluntarily the relaxation response and it is uh, required that the person is aware of things uh, he is uh, relaxing he gives commands by himself uh, and uh, that is how it can help now stress can also stress or distress can affect the immunity um, there is uh, immune balance because of decreased type 1 cytokines and increased type 2 cytokines and uh, this may cause uh, 
hypersensitivity like asthma, atopy, SLE, etc. Whereas um, it also can uh, decrease the host defenses where viral susceptibility, latent virus expression uh, is also triggered. Um, now relaxation benefits again, uh, relaxation response uh, causes slow, slowed brain wave uh, patterns, improved skin and vision, improved sleep and energy, decreased muscle tension, slow heart rate, lowers the blood pressure and uh, blood lactate levels, improved immune system. This is uh, the topic of today, improved immune system, improves di digestion, normal libido, restores circulation, uh, uh, decreases um, uh, the metabolism, uh, improved uh, sense of well-being and the ability to communicate effectively and manage life's demand. These are some of the advantages of uh, relaxation, uh, relaxation response. Now, how stress affects immunity? Again, because of stress, there is poor sleep and uh, the psychological stress will uh, affect the autonomic nervous system. As I said, the hypothalamopituitary axis is uh, activated. Uh, maladaptive health behaviors are seen. And this affects the acquired immunity, the immuno, uh, immunosenescence, that is uh, telomere attrition, as well as uh, the innate immunity of the body, which leads to susceptibility to infectious illnesses, as well as uh, inflammatory conditions in the body. Now, re that is uh, reducing the st stress, yoga or meditation or relaxation reduces the stress and anxiety, improves the autonomic and higher neural center functioning and improves physical health of even patients suffering from complex diseases like cancer. Presently, uh, yoga therapy is being used effectively in managing cardiovascular, respiratory, musculoskeletal, gastrointestinal, endocrine, nervous, immunity related and uh, reproductive disorders. Now, uh, let me put a point here. There was a study done in uh, tuberculosis as well as some HIV, uh, HIV studies are also mm -hmm. there uh, where it has been shown that yoga practices meditation, relaxation, help them uh, to recover faster. Uh, the, uh, what you call, infectious um, status is uh, faster mitigated by the uh, people who practice yoga along with the other medications which are uh, accepted worldwide. Now, yoga affects all aspects of uh, human existence. The physical body, that is the Annamaya Kosha, uh, which is uh, the food sheet of the body, it affects and it makes it uh, healthy. The pranamaya kosha, where is, uh, which is the energy levels of the body are balanced. Uh, the ida, pingala, the shushumna, uh, all the uh, energy channels of the body are balanced. The manomaya kosha, that is the mind. Now these are the all the aspects, the five aspects of human existence itself. The manomaya kosha is the mind uh, and uh, yoga helps in calming down the mind, relaxing the mind, balances uh, the mental activity. Vijnanamaya kosha is again, uh, the intellectual uh, aspect of a human being that is also uh, given a lot of importance in yoga. Ananda Maya Kosha, the happiness quotient of the body uh, is also affected by regular practice. Now, psychological stress is thought to undermine host resistance to infection through neuroendocrine mediated changes in immune competence. Um, yoga improves the parasympathetic response, thereby induces a relaxation response, which in turn reduces the effect of stress hormones. It brings uh, balance and improves immunity. Now, what are the various uh, practices uh, in um, yoga which we can do regularly, even a common man can do, are some of the asanas, uh, the pranayamas, uh, kriyas. Uh, kriyas include uh, jalaneti, sutraneti, uh, vamana kriya, uh, relaxation techniques, uh, simple uh, shavasana or uh, simple breathing, uh, what you call uh, awareness of the breathing. Uh, one has to simply uh, sit calmly and then uh, observe his breathing pattern. Do not alter that. Observe uh, the breathing pattern. Slowly the breathing becomes very slow. Uh, uh, longer uh, breaths are taken. And that itself is a uh, sort of relaxation uh, technique uh, that can be practiced. Meditation techniques. There are numerous uh, ways of meditating. Uh, again, uh, one has to start observing his activities, especially when uh, uh, we observe our breath, we observe um, uh, the sounds which are occurring uh, by just by closing our eyes, we start concentrating on those uh, inner aspects of the body that itself is relaxation and meditation, which can be practiced by anybody, anywhere. Uh, just have to close your eyes and start observing your breathing pattern. Um, 
how to do these uh, yogic practices is more important uh, because that is how the effects of yoga are established on they have to be very relaxed that's very important it is not an exercise one has to remember that yoga is not exercise it is not a repetitive uh, repetition of uh, certain movements or something like that it has to be very very relaxed very slowly something like a slow motion in a cricket uh, uh, what you call a live video when we see that uh, the umpire is checking uh, what uh, whether the um, uh, decision is correct or not or whatever when we see a slow motion in that speed if we do yoga is very very effective because at that time we can do it with uh, awareness that is very important every part of the body uh, moves and those movements have to be observed uh, the pain what happened the stretching where is this where the compression is there all that awareness should be there and importantly also breath awareness is very important during uh, any practice of uh, yogic practices breath awareness um, again will help in improvising the relaxation response now other advantages of yoga other than this is uh, stress reduction of course as i told you now uh, help stay fit now because of the covid 19 we are all under uh, lockdown and most of the people are uh, have become very very lethargic very uh, sedentary in, in their lifestyle and uh, this would uh, Uh, forget about covid 19 just because we are staying healthy uh, inside the house we are staying safe we are stay we are maintaining the social distance what would happen is uh, in a, in this long uh, uh, what you call uh, lockdown uh, other health uh, problems could be developed like uh, uh, obesity is one of the simplest thing which can occur diabetes uh, mellitus uh, which is also a risk when uh, we have sedentary lifestyle so these uh, lifestyle disorders can be avoided by uh, regular practice of yoga um, more balanced uh, mental state it reduces the anxiety of the person uh, because in these uh, difficult times again everyone is anxious and anxious about uh, staying at home and anxious about uh, getting covid 19 infection anxious about uh, what will be the financial status uh, after this covid uh the uh, all these will bring in stress and that is why we can reduce anxiety by regular practice of yoga good sleep it gives good sleep and normalizes the circadian rhythm uh yoga is known there are many studies where uh, it has been shown that uh, regular practice of yoga brings the uh, normal circadian rhythm uh, why this is important is the right time to eat the right time to wake up the right time to sleep is all very important regular healthy lifestyle Uh, includes all this and uh, yoga can help you bring uh, this circadian rhythm to normalcy and definitely we can stay healthier by the practice of yoga uh, we stay home stay safe maintain social distance and uh, practice uh, yoga for staying healthy thank you uh, because there are a lot of um, practices uh, which uh, i mean there are hundreds of practices we cannot list out any practice as such uh, simple uh, asanas simple uh, pranayamas uh, can be uh, practiced uh, meditation relaxation is very important uh, um am i audible yeah yeah okay okay so if i if there are any questions i would like to take them um uh, there are a lot of questions coming in uh, about the specific use of kriyas uh, one second i am not able to pause sharing are you still able to see my screen yeah it's off now yeah, okay now it's fast uh, there are, there uh, are yes, Dr. Rajesh, uh, you were saying about yeah there are uh, questions about uh, the specific use of kriyas like kunjal uh, sudarshan kriya bhastrika um, you know there are uh, jal leti so do we have any specific information about them or do we apply them as general principles of cleansing um, you know high personal hygiene and uh, detox 
if we talk about covid 19 evidence again we do not have any evidence right now uh, for these uh, uh, specifically for covid 19 because covid 19 is just a baby uh, it's about 3 4 3 to 4 uh, months old only uh, so there were uh, not many studies done i feel but uh, we have seen uh, the effects of uh, these yogic practices uh, previously in infectious diseases uh, which are definitely helpful uh, for uh, preventing uh, definitely yes uh the kriyas can be practiced because uh, they are cleansing and uh, helpful in improving the uh, what do you call upper nasal uh, tract uh, immunity uh the uh, gut uh, uh, immunity is also uh, better by the practices of punjal kriya or uh, uh, basti and uh, such kriyas uh, pranayama definitely will help in improving uh, the uh, what do you call immune status of the lungs as well as uh, uh the overall uh, energy sheet is controlled by pranayama now it would be very what you call uh, traditionally speaking we can say the prana is balanced but uh, uh, scientifically also we can see that uh, scientifically we can also see that the immune uh, functions or immune system of the body is uh, having lot of improvement by the practice of pranayama sudarshan kriya uh the various techniques uh, which are uh, explained uh, uh in the traditional texts of uh, yoga have been proven uh, to be uh, clinically very very effective also in uh, various diseases as i said tuberculosis tuberculosis uh, is a very uh, what you call grave uh, infectious disease uh, which affects uh, the low immunity uh, people uh it has been shown that during tuberculosis there is a faster recovery uh, or uh, a sooner uh, uh, what you call the bacterial status is uh, negated and earlier i also a lot of studies in hiv were done with the yogic practices like meditation relaxation uh, which will uh, which have shown that definitely uh, the coping strategies uh, for uh, these stressful disorder i mean the, there is a lot of stress in these disorders also i'm not saying covid 19 can be totally uh, what you call uh, removed because of yogic practices but definitely it will help the people who are already suffering uh, these uh, kriyas can be uh, made uh, the practice can be made regularly as well as to prevent uh, covid 19 these uh, practices will be definitely helpful Dr. Abhay, there is a question from Dr. Naveen Ji. It's lying for a long time, and uh, the question was originally put to uh, Dr. Rao, but uh, uh, the question is uh, something which is relevant uh, to your presentation, and that is that uh, it is known that exercise improves immunity. Physical exercise helps in improving immunity. Yeah. So. Uh, why do you think that those people i mean the question was when uh, dr raghavendra rao was presenting that you know there were some sports people persons who interacted with covid 19 despite being very physically fit so how how do you think that they will have uh, interacted that uh, virus uh, so he has suggested a thing that you know is it because they overworked or they were uh, you know overactive physically or there was a lot of training because of which that happened uh, what i think because i saw that uh, thing and that was that you know anybody can interact a condition what is good about those people who interacted covid 19 uh, in in those sports persons is that none of them actually got hospitalized none okay. of them showed any symptoms actually nobody was critical so that was a good thing about you know having a good immune system or being physically fit and that is very very important to be highlighted that even if you get a covid 19 virus uh if you are uh, keeping fit that helps in reducing the health care uh, emergencies and that uh, helps in reducing the criticalities you can still spread the infection that is why it is very important to stay safe and keep uh, your contacts very safe uh, but it is important that you know being physically fit also helps in uh, reducing the criticalities so uh, i think that suggests uh, uh, 
so his suggestion was tack and do you have anything to say on that uh, as uh, dr raghavendra in his uh, first talk uh, told that uh, covid 19 is for definitely uh, going to affect uh, anybody and everybody if we are coming into contact that is very important the how much contact one has come to is also very important uh, so it is not about coming into contact with covid 19 maybe we are also uh, already uh, into contact with the covid 19 virus uh, but we have not yet developed the signs and symptoms as you as you were also telling uh, previously uh, that uh, most of the cases are asymptomatic so maybe everyone uh, who has come into contact with the virus uh, uh, is not active or uh, symptomatically active as of now but definitely the um, athletes who would have got this uh, maybe because of the uh, contact what they have or repeated contact they might have got because of the uh, frequent traveling and other things as well as see uh, uh, one of the I, i also saw the same question one of the reasons why Uh, these uh, athletes uh, would have would have uh, what you call contracted it because uh, they train extensively and exercise uh, moderate exercise is known to what you call prevent uh, infectious diseases and not uh, too much or too less of exercise also too less is also not good and too much is also not good that may again what you call um, uh, bring in uh, the susceptibility to the uh, infectious diseases uh, Uh, i mean uh, very important that we have to be fit that is absolutely right but that doesn't mean overdoing it is also necessary overdoing can bring down the immune status of the individual and also the lifestyle the uh, what you call um, uh, what food we take is also important so there are a lot of factors uh, so athletes might have got that is not the reason that we just Uh, think that we should not exercise moderate exercise is known to uh, improve the immunity uh, status of a individual and moderate exercise not exhausting one uh, oneself is very very uh, important yeah i'd like to add yeah. on this um, not only as an athlete i have been training athletes so not only they exercise over exercise and they are focused in one thing okay they are focused on enhancing your fitness only just for bringing on the medals not for making your immune system balance not making you healthy they don't focus the athletes are not focused for your health they are focused to get the medals that's it they are use drugs they are use medicines and over exertion as dr abhay told over exertion keep gets your immune down absolutely they have been hundreds of researchers on elite athletes they are very highly susceptible to diseases no matter whether it is heart disease or hypertension stress related disorders uh, it's same with football players they are prone to more fractures they are prone to more diseases they are pr- prone to more osteoarthritis and they are more prone to infections so dr navin you are right you are right uh there is a uh, one intervention which has come from dr manoj koteri he is a senior colleague and the director of atmantar wellness center in pune he he says that overtraining could also be detrimental to health in terms of increased atp burning which can also result in faster cell proliferation through mtor pathways also the ad- adrenal fatigue uh exercise in moderation is always beneficial to build immunity under activity and over activity can be equally bad i think uh, this summarizes uh, more or less what we want to say uh thank you dr manoj for uh, joining in and uh, helping us uh i would like to bring uh, dr janak bahadur basnet our next panelist in discussion he is the president of uh, yoga and naturopathy doctors association of nepal uh, one of the very senior uh, yoga and naturopathy physicians and he runs a wellness uh, private hospital so thank you sir please join oh thank you uh, dr rajesh uh, let me share my screen
screen. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes, it's visible. Please go ahead. It is visible? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, good afternoon, everyone. So I think uh, uh, everything has covered by my seniors. So very few things to talk about these uh, topics. So uh, my topic, sir, is uh, Dr. Janak. Yeah. Please go for slideshow version. Slide is not coming, not visible. No slide is seen, but uh, you go to the tab there, slideshow tab, up after animations. Now you are in home tab, right? Okay. Yeah. After after animation, slideshow. Slideshow. Okay. No. Yeah, just about that. Is it okay? Is it okay now? In slideshow, you click on, you go to slideshow. Hello. Yeah. In the above menu, yeah. That is home menu, yeah, next. Next, yeah, from beginning, the first one from beginning. Okay, so is it okay now? You'll have to, yes, it is okay. Yeah, you, know, you can continue. Okay, thank you. So, uh, my topics of discussion here is uh, uh, dietetics, nutrition, and uh, fasting for immunity. Uh, so, uh, I think. Uh, everything is uh, already mentioned and it will be uh, just repeating the things. Uh, so uh, our immune system, uh, we know that our immune system uh, protects uh, from us from infection, uh, but also it has a role in uh, uh, prevention of all chronic disease, including uh, cancer. So uh, we know adequate and appropriate amount of nutrition is required for uh, function of the, all the cells, including immune cells. And uh, uh, almost, we know that uh, from previous presentation, uh, the immune cells are uh, present into the gut, almost 70% of immune cells are present into the gut, and uh, more immunoglobins are uh, synthesized into the gut. So uh, gut health or gut immune health is very important uh, for uh, overall immune. So uh, our gut uh, microbiota, our bacterial, normal bacterial flora uh, plays very important role in uh, the uh, immune uh, system. So uh, when we eat any foods, that will directly interact with uh, our immune system of the uh, gut microbiome flora. So, uh, there is a, uh, every system has uh, their uh, own approach of uh, treating disease and uh, boosting our immunity. And uh, in uh, naturopathy and yoga, also we have uh, our own approach of a diet, uh, dietetics and nutrition. So we have our own principle. Uh, so according to yoga, uh, so diet is divided into three parts like uh, sattvic diet, rajasic diet, and tamasic diet. Uh, and uh, when we talk about immunity, when we call it with immunity, uh, sattvic diet and rajasic diet are more uh, convenient diet for uh, improving our immune function and the tamasic diet, which is a lethargic diet or unhealthy diet, uh, it uh, will decrease our uh, immune function. And when we talk about naturopathy diet, in naturopathy there are three uh, main uh, types like uh, eliminated diet, soothing diet and constructive diet. Uh, so uh, eliminated diet uh, means the diet which eliminates the toxins from uh, our body. Because in modern lifestyle, uh, uh, all our systems, all our body is uh, uh, loaded with uh, lots of uh, toxins from our food, uh, lots of uh, pesticide or preservatives, 
uh, from our uh, lots of medicines we take up uh, uh, so uh, from environmental toxins so our systems are loaded with uh, toxins so uh, we had to first we had to eliminate the toxins from our system so so for that purpose we should first introduce the eliminative diet and that is uh, the most important diet for elimination is uh, the juice fasting and uh, next thing is the soothing diet uh, which uh, soothes our systems uh, so that is the second part and third part is the constructive diet which we uh, say that is a proper healthy uh, diet so uh, when we talk about roll up nutrients to the immune systems so we should know about the what are the important nutrient which plays a specific role to the uh, immune proper immune function so uh, we can classify the nutrients like uh, micronutrients that is the protein carbohydrate and fats so these nutrients plays important role for the uh, structure of the immune cell and other cell also so uh, when these uh, micronutrients imbalance occurs or uh, deficiency of protein energy malnutrition occurs that leads to the poor immunity and uh, leads to the infection that is uh, already known and uh, most of the disease uh, the chronic disease comes from the imbalance of the protein carbohydrate and fat especially when uh, carbohydrate and the sugar we take if we take more we, that leads to diabetes and that also uh, leads to the immune compromise and when the fat we take excess amount of fat that will lead to the uh, obesity hypertension and heart disease and that also uh, leads to the immune uh, compromise and when the protein we take excess amount of protein that uh, leads to the uh, uric acid and the gout and so on kidney disease like that so uh, we need to balance our uh, macronutrients also and some part of the this macronutrients plays is very specific role uh, to our immune systems like uh, um, arginine the amino acid arginine which is the uh, which is uh, on amino acid which uh, the macrophage uses nitric oxide for uh, um, to kill the bacteria and the glutamine which is a important source of uh, uh, energy for uh, uh, the immune cells more than glucose Uh, glutamine is used for the immune, uh, immune cells for the energy and uh, the carbide the oligosaccharide already uh, dr sunil has mentioned that uh, oligosaccharide which is uh, very useful uh, for um, uh, the immune uh, proper functioning of the immune cells uh, that is uh, required for uh, cell binding cell recognition and glycolipids uh, which is formed from the uh, with the lipid and is important for uh, immune response and it is also a uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, pro, uh, prebiotic for the uh, intestinal um, bacterial flora and uh, the fat uh, the omega 3 especially the omega 3 fatty acid uh, enhances the immune functions and uh, reduce the inflammation so uh, these uh, specific micronutrients also plays an uh, important role for the immune function so uh, when we talk about the immune uh, immunity Uh, the micronutrients plays very important role especially the vitamins and the minerals are very important to boost our immunity and uh, all the vitamins plays a role but out of that vitamin c is the most important uh, vitamin uh, known uh, to uh, improve our uh, immunity it uh, acts as a potent antioxidant cofactor for biosynthesis of and gene regulatory uh, mechanism for enzymes so uh, vitamin c rich foods improves our immunity and second thing is vitamin d vitamin d as we know vitamin d is related to uh, uh, calcium and uh, bones but uh, now it is uh, the research has shown that uh, vitamin d also plays very important role uh, to uh, the innate and both innate and adaptive immune response so many uh, research has uh, shown that the deficiency uh, of uh, vitamin d is associated with autoimmune diseases so it means that vitamin d also very important uh, role um, to uh, with uh, immune function and another vitamin is vitamin a which also regulates uh, the cell division and proliferation of immune cells and it is also acts as uh, antioxidants so thereby it reduces the inflammation Uh, and another vitamin is vitamin e which also uh, is a antioxidant which modulate t cell membrane integrity signal transcription and inflammation mediated generated by uh, other immune cells so uh, these are the most important vitamins like vitamin c vitamin d vitamin a and vitamin e uh, 
uh, are the important vitamins which plays very important role uh, to the uh, immune function. And of course, uh, vitamin B complex will also have uh, some role on this. So uh, when we talk about the mineral and uh, uh, immune function, the most important uh, mineral is the zinc, which plays very important micronutrient to uh, and acts as a cofactor uh, with both catalyst and structural role to maintain the proteins. So uh, vitamin uh, means uh, the zinc deficiency, even a small amount of uh, zinc deficiency may lead to the uh, many infections and immunocompromise. So zinc is very important micronutrient mineral uh, to boost our immunity and another um, uh, elements that is a um, uh, selenium is also very important and copper and iron are also plays very important role uh, to improve our immunity. So uh, another uh, things which are we call phytochemicals which is found in the uh, vegetables and fruits. Uh, so they also play very important role uh, to uh, improve our immune functions to boost our immunity. Uh, these are catenides, flavonoids, polyphenols, allium compounds. So uh, these compounds act as a potent uh, antioxidant and anti-inflammatory actions. Uh, so they are also anti-cancer and anti-oxidant uh, effects. So uh, phytochemicals are also important uh, to um, uh, boost our immunity or to improve our immune functions. And so these are, those are the nutrients which are in, uh, which plays very specific role uh, to the, or uh, to improve our immune functions. And what are the foods? Because uh, we are more concerned about the uh, foods, uh, which is very important. And uh, uh, there are many foods available, but uh, only we cannot choose uh, all the foods which uh, uh, contains what amount of uh, zinc or copper or uh, iron or something like that. But uh, we have to make it very easy and uh, practical. So uh, I want to simplify this, uh, what are the foods for immunity? So first thing, first principle, we should uh, uh, know that while having food in our plate, 50% of the plate should contain uh, the green vegetables and then fruits. And only 50% should contain the protein source and uh, the cereals, the carbohydrate source. So uh, that is the most important things because the many of the uh, means uh, Indian or Nepali people eat a very uh, less amount of uh, vegetables and they eat more uh, like rice or chapati or something like that, cereals. So uh, to improve our immunity, the most important food is uh, vegetables vegetable source and then fruits. So, uh, but uh, here my concern is about the source of vegetable and fruits, I, whether they are uh, natural or they are organic or not, because uh, most of the vegetable and fruits we get in uh, market is uh, uh, loaded with uh, uh, toxins, that is the uh, pesticides. So that is a great threat to our health and immune cell, immune function also. So uh, we need to choose the vegetables, which are uh, organic, which are seasonal and uh, varieties of vegetables. If we eat like that, we can get all the, almost all of the uh, component of the food, means of nutrient, which is uh, important for uh, our general health as well as the immune, uh, for, for immune function. So uh, we need to choose the seasonal organic and varieties and locally produced, locally grown vegetables. That is very important things. And next thing is a protein source. So while choosing the protein source, we uh, can choose many things contain means uh, uh, proteins. But uh, the best source of proteins is sprout, beans, lentils, milk product, fish and seafoods, egg, flesh meat. But uh, uh, while choosing these things, uh, so we should uh, know that uh, the other things, so only we are getting protein and any other harmful things we are getting from that, that means that is not a good choice. Suppose, for example, if we take the meat, it contains very uh, good amount of proteins and uh, uh, minerals also, but it uh, lacks the fibers and phytochemicals. So uh, it may not be the good choice and it may uh, lead to the mis high in um, saturated fat uh, like a cholesterol. Uh, so it is not good for our health. So uh, while choosing the source, we should uh, choose uh, that is the, which is safe and which contains all, almost all of the uh, nutrients. So uh, for choosing the protein source, 
that is uh, plant source is better and uh, from animal source we can choose the uh, milk and milk product and if we go for uh, non-veg that is the fish and seafoods are better choice so uh, we should uh, uh, choose like that so another thing is the carbide. When we choose the carbide, we should not take uh, in the refined form like sugar, added sugar or uh, refined form. So uh, we should choose from the natural and complex form of carbide, uh, which, can, which we can get the uh, grains, that is the whole grains, not refined, not like brown rice instead of white rice. So uh, that is the complex and natural form is the most important source of carbide. And when we choose the fat, so fat is the great, um, there is a evidence shows that when we uh, take increased amount of fat, that will uh, reduce the immune functions. And especially the trans fat and saturated fat. So uh, we have to reduce the intake of fat and uh, uh, natural vegetable source, which contains the omega-3 fatty acid, especially the flaxseed oil, mustard oil, sesame oil, uh, olive oil, coconut oil, uh, are very uh, good for um, our immunity and general health also. So, uh, and when uh, we talk about the species, they are very important species. All species are uh, good for our immune system, especially uh, the turmeric, gingers, and garlic are very uh, important um, species. Uh, which we, we uh, all are available in our kitchens. We use every day. So these are very uh, important immuno in answer. Uh, so uh, when talking about drinks, so we can uh, take uh, green tea, herbal tea, uh, cinnamon tea, lemon grass tea, or tulsi tea. These are uh, the drinks which uh, boost our uh, immunity. So uh, this uh, type, because uh, we cannot choose uh, uh, availability of the uh, food stops. So uh, while choosing, we should know that which are available, which are very fresh, organic, and safe, and which uh, gives a variety of uh, nutrients. So we have to choose these things. And uh, when uh, we take all of these uh, food stops, then uh, we can get, we can certainly uh, improve our immunity. This is not uh, actually uh, immunity improving, it is as a whole health improving uh, diet because anything which improves our uh, overall health will improve, uh, definitely will improve our uh, immunity also. So uh, lastly, I am coming to the fasting and immunity. That is a uh, very debatable topic and uh, some people are saying that fasting is very good for uh, immunity and um, uh, it should be practiced. And some people are telling uh, it is uh, not good for our um, immunity uh, because uh, the uh, poor nutrition or uh, deficiency of nutrition will uh, lead to the poor immunity. So fastings, uh, according to naturopathy principle, this is the eliminated diet. And when our body is loaded with toxins, then how we can imagine our good immunity? So uh, definitely, for immunity, uh, fasting is uh, very helpful. But uh, the question comes here, when uh, we have an uh, infection, like either that is a viral or bacterial, in that times we should do fasting or not, I, either it is beneficial or harmful that uh, we should see uh, that aspect. But uh, uh, as general, uh, to improve the immunity, fasting is a very important tool, very effective tool. And uh, fasting has uh, mainly uh, four functions. Like the fasting is the physiological rest during fasting. Our body uh, systems, our internal organs get uh, rest, especially the digestive system, because digestive system's health is very important uh, for uh, proper immune function. Because most of the immunity uh, immune cells are present, lymphocyte cells are present into the um, gut. So physiological rest. Uh, means during fasting, the digestive system gets rest and uh, uh, it will be renewed and it will be cleaned. So that is the most important thing. Uh, another thing of uh, effect of fasting is a detoxification. So fasting will detoxify our whole systems, so whole body, whole organs. Uh, that is another um, thing, especially the toxins which are uh, deposited into the fat adipose tissue uh, will be removed from the systems. So that is the another effect of fasting. And uh, another thing is autophagy activation. During fasting, when there is a calorie uh, restriction, uh, restricted diet or fasting, there is a autophagy activation is uh, um, activated. So 
autophagy means that uh, when there is a energy crisis inside the body, the cell, the healthy cells, um, it's the weaker cells or uh, infected cells or precancerous cell or weak cells. So uh, that is called the, that is mechanism is called the uh, autophagy. So uh, fasting, uh, during fasting, there is energy crisis and all the healthy cells will uh, eat uh, the unhealthy or precancerous or infected cells. Or, uh, so this is uh, the mechanism uh, which we call autophagy and uh, so that is activated and that removes all the uh, weaker or infected cells. And third things, uh, fourth uh, thing, uh, fourth effect of the fasting is uh, immune response. That is the, uh, during fasting, the immune systems will be uh, reset because when there is the ultra, uh, the, like autoimmune disease, there is the uh, abnormal immune response uh, in the body. So uh, fasting will reset the immune response. Uh, so, um, Fasting uh, is uh, very helpful to uh, improve our immunity uh, in my view. And some researches are um, available, uh, some evidence are available about the fasting and immunity. Uh, so uh, most of the research uh, shows that um, uh, during fasting, the WC count uh, does not decrease significantly because uh, there is no decrease in WC count. Uh, and the natural killer cells activity has uh, increased during the fasting. And total CD2 and CD3 cells were essentially unchanged during fasting. So it means the uh, cell mediated immunity is not impaired during fasting. So on the other hand, the total uh, CD4, especially CD4 count has decreased during fasting. But uh, the CD8 uh, count has not decreased significantly. So uh, it means only CD4 count uh, is decreased during the fasting, but all the others, uh, other immune cell activity has uh, shown to increase. Uh, so there is no detectable change uh, in plasma condition of any cytokines or soluble interleukin-2 receptor occurred during the fasting. So uh, this means that only CD4 counts is the decrease. Uh, so, uh, but uh, the thing is that uh, when this fasting, most of the fasting is uh, done in, I mean, the research has been done in uh, uh, animal model. Uh, so uh, during that time, uh, the decrease in CD4 count uh, is correlated with the cortisol level because there is the increased level of a cortisol into the uh, plasma. Uh, that means the during fasting, the subject, uh, take a means to took at as a, a stress so stress hormone the cortisol has increased so due to the uh, cortisol uh, the cd4 count has decreased so uh, but uh, in our naturopathy prospect of fasting is in a, a therapeutic fasting uh, uh, we, we should not, uh, means we uh, don't take it as a stress because during fasting we'll be uh, doing uh, all other practices like naturopathic treatment, yoga practices. So uh, we do not take uh, as a uh, stress. So during that time, there is chances of um, not increasing cortisol and uh, that means uh, the CD4 level count will also uh, will not decrease during the fasting. So, This means, uh, and uh, the research shows that after refeeding, there is a uh, normalization of all the uh, immune cells into the blood. So it means that uh, during fasting only, the CD4 count has decreased. After refeeding, everything is normal. Uh, uh, that means uh, we, uh, we may not have to do fasting during viral infection, but we can do as already uh, our senior told uh, that we can do in a, during a bacterial infection, uh, but to, uh, as a whole, if we want to improve our immunity, so if we do fasting, then we do for, for diet, like that is what we call constructive diet in uh, naturopathy, then uh, it will definitely uh, increase our uh, immune function. So uh, I think fasting is, in my view, fasting is a very uh, good uh, to improve our uh, immunity.
so uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Janak. Actually, um, there is a question which uh, has come. Uh, can you suggest the commonest? Uh, Hello. Hello. Yeah. Can you suggest some common uh, type of fasting which can be safely practiced by everyone? Because you know there are a lot of people who are interested in uh, uh, understanding a detox regimen because people have a lot of time. They are sitting at home and they can uh, follow some healthy practices uh, utilizing this time. So, what is safe? What is usually safe? Uh, as a fasting method for everyone which can be and what is the duration of that fasting and what is the method of that fasting that will be definitely the intermittent right, fasting. that thing which is not uh, something which has to be uh, taken from a doctor to a patient but something which can be generally practiced by everyone uh, that uh, that definitely will be the intermittent fasting with uh, um, uh, our 24 hour to 40 hour uh, uh, 48 hour fastings will be uh, safe for everyone uh, they can practice at home uh, with a lemon juice will be the best type of fasting. So intermittent fastings, uh, that is for, uh, 24 hour to 48 hour only. That will be safe during this time for everyone. Okay, and uh, there is a very important uh, discussion. I think it's very interesting for all the panelists also if, the, if you'd like to venture in. Um, but I, I would like to present this view uh, before all the audience uh, uh, from the entire yoga and naturopathy community. And that came because uh, Dr. Janak had an important uh, slide in the beginning, which classified the diets as uh, uh, sattvic, rajasic, tamasic diets, and then eliminating cleansing, I mean, uh, that uh, so, yeah. classification of diet. Yeah. And uh, then we moved on to the nutritional uh, and the nutrient components of the diet. So there are uh, three important understandings which we brought in together uh, through his discussion. And uh, this is very, very interesting. Like there was a question that uh, fermented food, uh, which you were talking of uh, later in the slides, that comes in uh, the tamasic diet. Uh, yeah. So these kind of confusions, I think uh, this, is, this is very uh, relevant for all of the audience to understand that naturopathy comes from a very traditional medicine background where there are a lot of concepts and understandings which are taken from the ancient books or you know, the ancient understandings. And uh, there is a lot of modern discoveries, modern science additions, which are also continuously going on. Uh, as a yoga and naturopathic uh, physician, we have a responsibility to uh, responsibility to response uh, to respond to what are the modern advances, what are the correct uh, and the uh, contextual scientific understanding of any condition or uh, or a subject, and in that context, it's very very uh, uh, important to understand that we value the scientific understanding much more than what is traditionally understood. And uh, this is across the world, everywhere we value the science a lot. Uh, so uh, we should go by what is our current uh, biochemical, uh, nutritional uh, understanding of the food. And uh, that is something which should be promoted. That should be because that is something which can be applied clinically very well. Whereas the, the traditional principles are the general principles which can be applied generally to the population, a larger part of population uh, in uh, regular lifestyles. Do you have anything to add, Dr. Janak, to this particular thing or any other panelist who would like to uh, venture into this? No, definitely we have to uh, update with uh, modern scientific uh, evidence, and we have, uh, and we should not uh, uh, neglect our uh, basic principle of naturopathy also because uh, they are also equally uh, mis relevant in this um, situation also, and uh, uh, we cannot neglect. I think uh, so, but we have to correlate with uh, our ancient 
naturopathy principle with the modern scientific evidence. Thank you, Dr. Janak. Dr. Abhay, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, hello. Hello, I think uh, I was on mute. Um, the fermented food uh, uh, query, what uh, just now you put forward, again, it is evidence-based. See, naturopathy and yoga, what we are uh, bringing into uh, what you call the therapeutic aspect or uh, 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 I mean into the clinical field, again, it is all evidence-based. Now, the recent evidence is showing that these fermented food foods are good. Uh, so that definitely, see, we cannot stick on to the same principles uh, which were told uh, thousands of years back. Uh, there may be some evidences which uh, bring in, like, for example, uh, the whole medical world has said that uh, fatty foods and uh, such things are not good for the heart or something like that. But now there is a new trend where they are saying, no, no, you have to take some fats also, which are good fats for the uh, health of the individual. So that is because of the uh, recent evidence what uh, we have got. So if we have good evidence on these fermented foods, then definitely we can adopt them, which uh, see the uh, principles alone are not the, what you call, uh, most important thing. Uh, what is good for the public, what is good for the health of the individual is also to be taken care of. Also, also I think it's important to understand that, you know, uh, in traditional cultures around the world, fermented food is a known thing. Yes. And, uh, and fermented food is something which uh, should be taken as a natural principle, as a naturopathic principle, because it is found in almost all the cultures around the world. So I let us add a little bit on this. Yeah, please fermented come. Foods. Okay. Your your voice, you are not audible at all. Now, am I audible now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The fermented foods, uh, fermented food doesn't mean decayed food. There is a scientific principle on fermentation. We are inviting lacto, naturally occurring lactobacillus. Dr. Dr. Sunil, Dr. Sunil, irrespective of decay or not, what is the principle is, is does it not come under what is called as tamasic food? So, no, no it doesn't. Hold, hold on for a second. I'll, I'll give you another important view in that, that like, you know, onion or uh, garlic, for example, can come under tamchik. So the, the idea tamsic. behind this discussion, which we have brought in is that uh, it's not that principle, but it is also the understanding, the current scientific understanding of uh, these diet and nutritional principles and, and these nutrients, which are also important to uh, incorporate into our understanding, especially when uh, we, we are uh, a science-based uh, system. Yeah, please, please go yeah. ahead. Yeah, uh, decayed tamasic is like putrefactive, okay? Putrefication process is called tamasic, tamas. It goes into tamas because that increases more tamasic energy into your body. That's called putrefication. Here, fermentation is completely different process, okay? So these are opposites, okay? One is putrefactive, tamasic. This is, this can be sattvic. And there is nothing called sattvic, tamasic, and rajasic because these three things we need to compare with your own nature, with your prakriti, with your body, right? Something that is rajasic for one person can be sattvic for another person. We need to take account of that as well. Is that clear? Or I need to explain more because I don't want to take more time. Let me give you a perfect example, okay? So let's see, meat is a rajasic food, okay? We all know, but a person, a laborer who has to dig for the whole day, the meat in a certain amount works as a sattvic food, okay? Uh, may I add on to this one, uh, Rajesh? May I add on to this? Yes, please. Yeah. See, the Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas are states of mind, the three gunas. Okay. So, this is just talking about the states of mind and how food influences these states of mind. So, uh, it may not be necessary that Tamas is something which is very bad. 
required to have all these three states of mind throughout the day in and day out because if you don't have the tamasic state of mind you can't go to sleep i give you a simple analogy for this early morning we talk about brahmi murta 4 to 6 am we are having too much of drive inside us we are having more of rajasic guna inside us because of the increase in the level of cortisol and other hormones okay as evening process progresses as the day progresses this cortisol hormone comes down it's a downward slope okay and by evening you have more of tamasic tendencies where you want to go to sleep okay so this is a into play of uh, your mental state tamas rajas and sattva which is happening cyclically throughout the day okay in some people's tamasic mentality will be more uh, more uh, dominant will be more of uh, lethargic people individuals who are not interested to do the work will always tired and all sort of things in some people who are very very hyperactive always want to do this and that there are such kind of thing and some people who are very very calm sort of kind of thing so food may really influence their mental state also is what i told like for example if you take more of fermented food what happens it takes longer time to digest because it takes long time to digest the amount of circulation to the brain the glucose to the brain is also delayed because they are low glycemic index foods as you take more of carbohydrate rich foods they are more high glycemic index foods you have a more rush of glucose to the brain your rajasic tendency okay so these all just helps in changing the mood states of the mind and nothing is bad actually all these three things have to be there it should be in a balanced form and just like the food can also is very important to also elevate your mood okay so the, uh, the taste of the food the satiety the appetite everything is also very important aspect to change your mood so all these three things are important and even fermentation or non fermentation doesn't matter at all it just matters on what sort of mood it is there how does the food influence your mood at that particular point of time thank you dr rao uh, there is one very important question which has come from the audience and one that is uh, uh, to be put to dr janak uh, what is good balanced diet or supplements uh, specifically when you are on quarantine you are living uh, you are uh, the countries are under lockdown many things are not available so how do you suggest that you know you uh, meet the requirements of all the nutrients uh, in your daily routine so um, i prefer a balanced diet uh, which is uh, from the natural source because i uh, don't prefer any supplement because uh, uh, when uh, sometimes we may need the supplements in the specific conditions but uh, generally um, we don't need any supplement when we are taking the varieties of foods which are uh, available in our local market because we don't uh, uh, get any one or two types of variety but uh, we get many several varieties of foods so uh, if they are available so uh, we don't need to take any uh, food supplement because uh, already we are taking um, like um, Uh, rice or cereals and uh, lentils beans uh, food combination what we eat uh, uh, right rice dal and uh, vegetables this mixed vegetables so that is already a com- uh, complete food and all, most of the uh, nutrient we get from that so uh, i think uh, balanced diet is the uh, most important and most healthy because that will uh, provide all of the essential nutrient but when we uh, take about the supplements that may uh, lead uh, another because we cannot take all the supplements at uh, once and uh, sometimes that may be over nutrition uh, uh, and uh, we are supplying one uh, nutrient then another may be uh, means uh, deficient so uh, i think a wholesome food is the best which is a natural which is seasonal and which is locally available is the uh, best uh, thing so uh what we can do i think uh one common uh, thing which is being promoted by a lot of medical associations in uh, america is that uh, you eat six servings of fruits and vegetables every day of minimum four colors do you agree to this particular view yeah yeah definitely i agree with that but uh, uh most of the time the means american people they use the refined food so uh, 
that uh, that is why they are lacking many uh, essential nutrient especially the mineral and vitamin and they uh, take lots of uh, nutritional supplement but uh, i think in our culture uh, that is not uh, that much required because we are already taking uh, lots of uh, uh, vegetable fruits uh, and uh, a combination of uh, cereals and uh, lentils or protein sources so uh, for them that is uh, accepted because that is they need uh, sometimes they need a nutritional supplement and fruits also but uh, in our context i think our uh, diet already it is uh, very balanced good and uh, uh, with all of its spices which are also important for uh, boosting our immunity right. or maintaining the concern, our, is, the concern is the urban life uh, is consuming a lot of carbohydrates a lot of sugar yeah. and that is creating a lot of problems for the populations around the world even uh, in countries like india we have a large diabetic population so it's important that you know we promote uh, things which uh, are rich in fiber rich in vitamins minerals and less in sugars and i think this particular principle actually works on even our population uh, yeah yeah in uh, our own populations because uh, so many people are using now uh, that also but uh, we have to miss uh, the uh, fruits and vegetable or variety of foods are available in our market easily then why we should go for a nutrition supplement no 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 we are talking yeah. about uh, i i i yeah, spoke yeah. about the four different colors six servings of fruits and vegetables not particularly about the nutrients and uh, nutritionals yeah 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 i agree with that yeah thank you okay um so i think we have covered more or less the uh, majority of the questions so uh, do you see any question which uh, remains unanswered or you would like to yeah, take there, it up there are some questions that uh, remains unanswered like food is a building material and, and you have you have you have to be audible sir uh, now is it audible now yeah how better. it is okay yeah. yeah so there are a few questions that needs to be answered still like uh, what we study as naturopathy is not a complete science yet the science itself is not complete so it keeps on we need to keep redefining and our science we need to redefine because it's more of ancient rather than modern so we need to redefine it uh, time and time again i think the country india itself needs to make a refining body a uh, Uh, a huge body and keep to keep on refining like food is the building material doesn't increase vitality this is outdated we need to forget about this okay uh mm, so that was one answer another answer was what type of food is good for arthritic and hyperacidic person so arthritis everything depends upon person to person the main cause of arthritis could be overuse because of his overweight or maybe his diet so the best diet for arthritis could be more calcium rich food more uh, food uh, food and supplements that help the bone and cartilage to regenerate like boswellia serrata is the only biochemical or any chemical found all over the world that can regenerate uh, cartilage what we call salaki in sanskrit okay and uh, the diet should be alkaline that's for sure lots of whole grains legumes lots of vegetables salads greens that's the food for uh, arthritis but we need to take individual account because everybody is different one diet that is suitable for me might not be suitable for another person a uh, doctor needs to take care of that account as well uh then uh there was one question which actually came because of your uh, presentation and uh, uh, and that is uh, i think uh, one doctor uh, milind parasar from um, odisha he has question that um what is the alternative to uh you know the sea uh, food uh, or the sea algae uh, which yeah, uh, sea you have mentioned nowadays seaweeds are available in supermarkets as well 
we need to search but all I fermented foods and super uh, all you, green foods are available in the supermarket you or dr janak mentioned about some greens right yeah 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 i i did yeah so why don't you okay. mention about that like those those are also very important uh, aspects which can be promoted yeah absolutely if you really want see food uh, see weeds then supermarkets can be the solution for us in supermarkets it's it, both of these are available but also there are alternatives that's why i kept green foods in is wheat grass uh, and another is uh, seaweeds okay nowadays we are also getting capsules of seaweeds like spirulina nori his kid we get capsules and wraps and vegetables either in supplements or in supermarkets as well and we so got the name for your alternative will be like the naturally the vegetable um, somebody was telling jalkumbi it's not jalkumbi uh, there is a it's it's a vegetable that's found in ponds and watercress i was talking about watercress could be a good alternative to that and basically to tell you to the point there is no alternative to green algae that are found or seaweeds that are found below the ocean because the composition of the land and the composition of the plant itself is completely different they are high in proteins they are high in uh, iodine that is completely different than other vegetable that we get in our market so for seaweeds we cannot find much alternatives if there is no uh, switch on to this but if it is possible buy from supplements or the supermarket that's the only alternative we have got dr sunil just an addition to the point food is a building material and does not increase your vitality it uh, may not be uh, totally i mean outdated or something like that if what has happened is overeating uh, is now a trend itself uh, overeating unnecessary eating uh, people think that the more we eat the more healthier we become and it is a common trend also if you see a small uh, child uh, the mothers would uh, run behind them to feed them that khana uh, khao otherwise you will be like weak khana uh, khao otherwise you will fall ill uh, you won't grow and all that so that is definitely a um, uh, not needed thing uh, the right amount of food to be taken is also very important a moderate amount of food is uh, to be taken healthy diet so food is definitely a building material but also it can help in uh, what you call uh, i mean too much eating should be avoided that's what uh, i was uh, wanted absolutely. to absolutely yeah so yeah. we are uh, very close to the end of the session i think uh, if there is anything uh, anybody would like to venture into i i, um, I, I would like to tell something here sure in whole world more people die after eating more rather than hungry people definitely sir <laughs> so the people eat more and die more and fall into the sickness because they don't know how much actually they should eat so i think we should have a session on uh, the quantity of food too the quality of food is important but at the same time the quantity of food is also very important uh, how much we should eat generally one meal one full meal a day is uh, sufficient like from past one and a half month i am trying uh, one meal in a day and surprisingly all my headache problems all my migraine problems all uh, whatever i was having is all vanished so the problems in our body are uh, more food generated or our habit generated or our uh, lifestyle generated rather than actual problems in the body so i feel that uh, when we talk about the quality of the food or, or the supplements or the variety of the food we should have a discussion on the quantity of food also how much a healthy person or working person or office goers or students what they should eat am i am i correct you all are doctors i am not doctor i have a very least knowledge 
I have no authority of speaking on naturopathy or yoga or Ayurveda. But I do have a common sense. And uh, this is what comes out. Yeah, you're you are very right on that. That uh, more people are dying overeating <laughs> than eating less. You're yes. very right on that. So everybody needs Prem to find out ji. true nature and do that. Yeah. Prem Anveshi ji, you are absolutely right on what you said that more people are dying, eating more rather than uh, not eating, starving. But definitely in this, uh, uh, what you call situation where we are having very low physical activity and uh, such a situation right now, one meal a day would sense, make very much sense. But uh, when people are really working hard and uh, maybe very active on the, throughout the day, a divided meal, small meal uh, concept would be uh, more, more, I mean, uh, suitable for this. Uh, yeah, it is. Age. It is true because uh, uh, one of my friend, when he found uh, that only one meal, he was just following me. He found that one meal a day is uh, healthy. So he started, but that one meal itself, what the quantity was so much that what we eat in three times. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I'd like to add on that. There have been thousands of research. Yeah. on uh, intermittent fasting, mainly Ramadan. Yes. Now the period is going on Ramadan, kind of intermittent fasting. And the results are fantastic. No, I'm, cancer, doing, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. It's found effective. I'm, I'm, but, I'm in Ramadan fasting now. <laughs> <laughs> but, so. but you should not be hogging around like other people do. So eat less. Intermittent fasting is one of the best things. Uh, the fasting has to give to the modern society, which has yes. to rush to the yes. working and the modern FS has to balance modern FS and still do fast. See the biggest problem. On that. The biggest problem here is uh, uh, when see the sugar labels are down in our brain and brain gives you a signal like you want to have a food, and you start eating, and the speed of eating is so high that before it reaches to your gut and goes into the brain, you are eating, eating, eating. And suddenly after eating, you realize that I've eaten too much. So the, uh, the process of eating is also very important. It is not quantity. It is not quality. It is a process also, which is very important with how we eat. Uh, we have to give a time to the food to be chewed, to go into your, uh, uh, you know, digestive system and reach up to that and reach up to your brain where uh, brain starts giving you signal. And uh, you can try yourself. You, when you are hungry, you just take a small portion, just eat thinking this is only available. And suddenly after 10 minutes later, you will find that you are not hungry because uh, the brain has got those signals of, uh, uh, you know, the sugars. Now, but what happened when we are eating, when we are eating at that particular time, the hunger, which is available, keeps on telling to the brain, like, keep on eating, keep on eating, keep on eating, keep eating, keep eating. And what happened, the quantity becomes much. So now what I feel is the process of eating, quantity of eating, and the quality of eating. These three things are very important. And I think we should take, uh, sometimes we should uh, talk about this too. I think uh, with this- Yeah, uh, another session, talk. maybe another session where we discuss yeah. about what to eat, how to eat, when to eat, and how much to eat. Yes, yes. yes. I, th I think that that could be our next session itself. Yes. And uh, let's, uh, let's plan it and uh, rally the experts around this subject. So thank you everyone for joining, including the audience. It has been a wonderful interactive audience. I think we have uh, received uh, hundreds of questions so far um, and uh, the live chats. Um, I'm sorry that you know we have not uh, closely followed up uh, all the uh, live pages where also the questions may have come. We will try to uh, post uh, the complete recording of this uh, uh, webinar uh, through our social media channels. So those people who have not been able to attend this will also be able to join and uh, look at what discussions went on for last uh, three hours. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thank you everyone. And I think uh, 
uh, it was a very wonderful talking to all of you. I think I have never spoken to Dr. Janak uh, in last 15 years so much uh, yeah. than we have spoken today. Uh, Dr. Sunil, Dr. Abhay, we hardly talk to each other on these subjects. We talk on every other subject. So I think uh, it's a great opportunity for all of us to join together. And uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Prem Anwesi ji, to actually host us and to invite uh, us onto this platform. I think we will do some nice uh, uh, thing together through these webinars as well as the future uh, activities which you plan uh, for IU sector. So thank you, everyone. I think. Uh, uh, Let's say goodbye to each other. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Dr. Rajesh, also for uh, uh, what you call uh, coordinating with the, among all the panelists and uh, giving your inputs also. Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.